In the brand website series, I talked about exception handling, validation handling, and how to do that on a minimal API with the API endpoint filters. While experimenting with those, I found something that could be useful as an alternative to HTTP request logging, which simply means logging the contents of the incoming request data or the outgoing response data. Because what I usually see in .NET projects, that is a custom logging middleware to log the contents of the HTTP request and response data. Depending on how recent that codebase is, the code usually looks as follows for that custom log middleware. And it basically tries to read out that request body stream or the response body stream, which firstly is not that straightforward to implement. And secondly, impacts the performance of your API since you're reading out that stream. By now, we can simply use the HTTP logging middleware by adding that to our services, add HTTP logging, and you can specify some options. And then underneath, of course, you would need to use the HTTP logging. And that would work, but that out of the box is not going to log the request body or the request or the response body. To get either the request body or the response body data, you can add a flag to the logging fields. HTTP logging fields request body. But if you then read the explanation, then they say logging the request body has performance implications as it requires buffering the entire request body up to the request body log limit. So an alternative way would be to use the minimal API's endpoint filters. And of course, there's other alternatives like using mediator and the pipeline behavior, which can access that request body data or response body data with no problems. So I added an endpoint filter to this post endpoint and that looks very similar as your regular custom middleware with the difference that an endpoint filter runs on the endpoint handling. And what you can do here is very cool. You can actually access the arguments of that endpoint. You can target arguments very specifically by actually passing through the type and even the index, so the position of that argument. So in our case, body data is the first, well, the request body is the first argument in this uh, endpoint. And we can just access this. We don't have to read out a stream or anything like that. We can just access it and then, for example, log it as we please. So I made a statement here that logs H. And then underneath, I added access to all of the arguments. That's also a possibility. But then, of course, you're getting the request body and even the, yeah, well, all of the arguments in that endpoint handler. The reason I added these arguments as well is because you might not want to repeat this pattern for every uh, endpoint handler rather maybe move it up to the group. So if I open Postman and do a post to our local API with some data, which is the request body, then it's actually going to show us so it can access the request body data easily. So the name is something and the age is 29 and then the log statement should output the 29, so that's good. And the arguments is a collection of yeah, all of the arguments. So just as an example, I serialize that and then log it. If we can even take a look at the results. So here you see it's the body data, the request body data, but also the logger, which is maybe less desired.
and then it just outputs in the console log. Of course, it stringified that uh, logger ob object, so it's just an empty thing. And you could do something similar for the response data. Like I mentioned, you might not want to repeat that for every endpoint, so we can make an extra class. Let's say the request logger. Implement the I endpoint filter, and then we can even access the dependency container. So inject our logger, for example, to actually, because it's the request logger, and then we can actually uh, use our logger to output the request body data and the response body data, and even more if you want to have the request parameters or route information. You can likely get it out of the context as well. So let's see. But then the HTTP context. And there you should be able to access most of the request and response information. So you can customize your logs. And like I mentioned, to capture response data, you simply uh, store that into a response variable log whatever you want to log and then return that response we can of course do the same in here we can target the specific type and position but then you can only apply it to one specific endpoint rather than reuse it over your entire application or multiple endpoints because then yeah you could use a generic but you still need to kind of know that position of the argument you're targeting. So that's why I added this context.arguments just in case you want to apply it to multiple endpoints. Just know that it's possible of course that uh, other types of objects are also included like the logger or whatever else you're injecting into those endpoints. If they all appear as empty objects, maybe you can just filter out the empty object. To apply this request logger to multiple endpoints at once, we can apply that to the map group instead of the specific endpoints. So let's take a look at that. So we cut out all of this code and replace it by the request logger. Then we'll make a map group and make sure that we apply that request logger there and then all of the other endpoints get mapped to that group and, and then we can get rid of this one if i execute that in postman then it should just log my request data so there's request body data so we see the request arguments which is name age and then that empty object for the logger and then we log the response as well which seems to be yeah, just a string the point of logging the request body or the response body is to have more context information whenever you're debugging and more specifically whenever something goes wrong you'll want some more context information just as with news channels, it's not that interesting to report everything that went as expected, rather to report on the unexpected events, the newsworthy events. So it would, it's a common practice to rather log more context info to request data whenever an exception occurs, so in the catch statement or in your exception handling method. That said, do as you please, log as much as you want, S certainly for those first few production deployments. But once your production environment is more or less stable, I would recommend just to focus on your exceptions. I just hope this alternative approach with the API endpoint filters can enrich your logs, improve your monitoring, if so, if you found this valuable, leave a like to let me know and subscribe because the next videos will continue with exception handling, but this time we'll take a look at an alternative and subscribe to not miss that video.
If you want access to the original code of my best Nougat packages, go to kisscode.com slash product, sign up and I'll make sure you get them. If you want even more access to my code, go to my Patreon, Patreon slash kissstupid, where you can become a member and access all of my best code.